Finally, the monthly AMA has once again arrived. After a month of very little communication, it was nice to once again finally getting them all on a Twitter spaces at the same time answering some of our questions. If you guys missed the AMA and you want to hear the full recording, I actually live streamed it on the channel. You guys can just go to videos or hit where it says live streams if you're on mobile and hit this one right here, official step in live AMA. I recorded the entire thing and even gave some of my own input at the end. Now, if you don't have an hour to kill and you just want the highlights, then you've come to the right place. In today's video, I will be covering the main talking points from the hour long AMA. A lot of things were discussed, including the new update that will be introducing the new health points mechanic, a new change to the sneaker enhancement, and some Realm 3 tweaks. And yes, I know, I know, you guys wanna hear and you wanna know how Realm 3 will help out Realms 1 and 2. That of course was also talked about in today's AMA. So for the sake of keeping this video short in the true form of TLDR, let's dive right in. So here's all the topics that were covered in today's AMA. Let's start off with the HP mechanic, meaning the health points mechanic. So if you guys didn't see this morning's tweet from Step In, they mentioned the introduction to the health points. Health points is going to be similar to durability for your sneakers, but with a little twist. Now they decided on adopting a dual DK system to ensure that the game remains sustainable for the long term. Now the way that it will work is that the degree of decay is affected by amount of energy used, the sneaker quality, and your comfort stats. So the higher your comfort stat, the lower the decay on your sneaker. So this is very similar to the current feature of durability, except durability is only affected by energy and your resilience stat. Health points will be affected by energy, comfort stat, and your sneaker quality as well. To restore your health points, you will be required to burn a mix of comfort gems, GST and GMT. Some things to note about the health points is that all sneakers will start with 100% health points. If your sneakers health points goes below 20%, it will no longer count towards your energy. And if the health points goes to zero, then you can no longer use a sneaker. In order to sell the sneaker or transfer it out, your health points will have to be at 100%. And the idea for this is a long-term token sync. So it gives a little bump to higher quality sneakers, to comfort gems, and the comfort stat. Also another sync to burn both GST and GMT. Now the difference between health points and durability is that you won't have to do it every day like you do with durability and repairing, for example. As an example, Epic sneakers may only require to restore health points once a year. So maybe rare sneakers will be twice a year, uncommons three times a year, and commons four times a year. Now I'm not saying these are the numbers, just giving you examples so that you can compare it to durability where you have to repair it either every day or every few days. The next update being made is sneaker enhancement changes. So with this update to perform sneaker enhancements, sneakers will be required to have a mint count of at least three mints on the sneaker. So if your sneaker has less than three mints, you will not be able to use that for a sneaker enhancement. Pretty much looks like they're trying to phase the enhancement thing out. At the same time, they're trying to incentivize minting and burning more GST. Next in the update was mystery box changes. They said that they will be giving it a buff and rewards will be getting better, but so will the cost to open up the mystery boxes. I honestly have been saying that mystery boxes need a buff and I don't even have a lot of luck, but I'm consistently opening level fives, level six, and it's never anything impressive. And with the value of GST so low, it's worth opening mystery boxes at this point in the game. They just need to be more profitable, I think, in order to replace GST's value being so low. So a good change, I think. And of course, with mystery box openings being more expensive, it means it burns more GST if the game starts favoring luck in opening mystery boxes. So boom, another GST sync. And the final update released was some Realm 3 tweaks. So they're making some adjustments to kickstart the launch of Realm 3. Mint cooldown on Realm 3 will only be 48 hours. 
and the mint cost will be 90 GST and 10 GMT. Higher quality shoe mint cost will be adjusted accordingly. In the AMA, Jan said that this is to enable evenly distributed and fair market economy in the third realm because after all, they are learning from their mistakes in the BNB realm. So the next thing they spoke about was uh, some UI and UX changes to be compliant with the iOS app store. But some more alpha here is a web-based marketplace. Jan said that step-in users will be able to access the in-app market on their computers, logging in via the step-in account email. The marketplace will be accessible via stepin.com. So that's definitely interesting. I am wondering what that's gonna look like and what bonus or extra features might the web browser have over the app. The next thing is Door. This is of course being utilized as a way to onboard more users. It is already the largest DEX on Solana. And the next move is that they will be launching the BSC plus Ethereum version of the automated market maker, making Door a multi-chain DEX. The front end of the application is expected to launch in August or September, and users will be able to then start creating trading pairs, providing liquidity, and earning some yield by holding GMT and GST. So again, I think this is a good thing because it will take some of that selling pressure off of both GST and GMT once that becomes available. Next, they spoke about the quarter two profits. If you did not know, Steppen announced Q2's profits I believe it was about a day or two ago, and they announced that they generated $122.5 million in profits through its platform fees. 5% of these profits or $6.125 million will be dedicated towards buyback and burn of GMT and sneakers. Then the rest of the profits are going to be used on improving security systems, expanding the team, partnerships, and physical merchandise. So this part was interesting because Jan mentioned possibly creating a step in water where they will go retail with it and sell it and use it as a, another avenue to not only earn money, but advertise Web3 and stepping. He said that this could be used to reach a broader audience, utilizing the reverse integration concept, which is not typically seen in Web3 space. Next, they spoke about Realm3 aka the ape realm so the ape realm will be launched on ethereum and most functions are going to be off chain so the gas fees will be less punishing the main focus with realm 3 is inclusiveness to expand the user base he went on to say that realm 3 will be an experiment to test out the potential of exploring additional external partnerships in the future so i don't know exactly how many board ape yacht club owners have claimed their ape sneaker as of yet i know that jerry mentioned that over a thousand claims were made within the first 24 hours but here's some metrics on the hashtag that the users have been using in order to claim their sneakers. It looks like more than 1,300 Twitter accounts have posted that message to claim, more than 29.3 thousand in engagement with a potential reach of 2.1 million people. So the question that everybody has been waiting for is how do older realms benefit the launch of the third realm? But before I tell you guys what they said about this, make sure to smash smash that subscribe button. If you guys wanna stay up to date with everything that's going on with Stepin, the crypto markets, or you just wanna stay up to date with the latest money-making trends in crypto, I upload videos several times a week about these topics. So please smash that subscribe button so that you never miss another opportunity to make money in crypto again. In addition to that, I try to answer all the comments that I get on the channel on every video. So if you guys have any questions about anything that's covered in today's video, drop it in the comments. So for the question on how do older realms benefit the launch of the third realm, Jan said that over 100,000 sneakers have already been burnt since the launch of the third realm initiatives. They're also requiring the Board 8 Yacht Club holders to tweet about Step In, which increases the brand's exposure. 
He went on to say that older realms will receive priority for upcoming partnerships such as renowned sports clubs, film IPs, and social media conglomerates. There will be a portion of revenue from Realm 3 that will also go into Realms 1 and 2 to support the ecosystem. Also, it will be more economical to be in the game-wide new gameplays in the older realms versus the newer, more expensive realms. And participating in such gameplays can lead to special future participation perks. Some of these will offer real world perks to holders of the specific NFT assets created for these partners. So as far as the first one, uh, it's definitely helped somewhat, but sneaker prices has still not really moved. They only have fallen down. And now they'll be slowing down those enhancements. So we probably won't be having anything near that number anymore. And there will probably be no more enhancements, period, once Realm 3 comes out. So on the second point, Board 8 Yacht Club holders are required to tweet. And that is definitely true. We've had over 1,300 unique Twitter accounts tweeting this with a potential reach of over 2.1 million users. Now the question will be, will they keep tweeting about this project once Realm 3 launches? On the third point, older realms will receive priority for upcoming partnerships. That's cool, but we have to see how exactly that is going to work. And will it be for everyone or will it just be Genesis holders? A portion of revenue from Realm 3 will go into Realms 1 and 2 to support the ecosystem. Again, how is that going to work? What is it going to be for? Is it going to be the same thing that they're already doing? Buying back GMT and sneakers? That one would really have no impact on GST prices overall, which is what probably the majority of people are worried about. It will be more economical to be in the game wide new gameplays in the older realms. That's definitely going to be true. So for example, when GMT earning comes out, it's going to be way cheaper to probably set up a level 30 GMT earner on the Solana realm than on realms two and three. And with a boost to mystery boxes, it's also cheaper to build up a Lux sneaker on Realms 1 than on Realms 2 and 3. So that could bring more people back or move them over to Realms 1 and 2, especially if they incentivize participation in these gameplays with some possible future perks. So another big one that the community has been asking about gst concerns and gst buyback jan said that they're never going to do a buyback and burn because it is unsustainable and will send the wrong signals gst buybacks cannot be sustained as long as fundamental issues are not resolved instead the team will make efforts to ramp up marketing to web 2.0 audiences and introduce more token sneaker burning mechanics to sustain the prices and then for gst support all initiatives mentioned above, like the Ape Realm, the Door, the partnerships, are all created with the intention to strengthen the game economy and thus GST. Jan stressed that markets are all down more than 80% from their highs and cannot expect GST to behave differently. So all these things are definitely true. I've been saying from the start, it is a mistake to even consider buying back GST because it's an unlimited coin it's an unlimited token that's the same as just burning money what is needed is more sneaker and token burning mechanics to be able to sustain and to balance out the inflationary tokenomics no matter what coin you look at right now everything basically looks the same everything is down between 70 to 90 percent in the market Unfortunately, this all plays into a part for GST. It is not only what's within the game economy itself that's affecting the price of GST, but also what's going on in the overall economy. Next was GMT earning. He said that GMT will be the ultimate balancer to the GST GMT ecosystem. Team is trying to expedite burning of GMT to get ready for GMT earnings to be released. Once GMT earnings are enabled, GST supply will drastically decrease. And again, this is again because there's a lot of rewards being given out right now in GST. Now, another thing they did mention is that they want GMT earnings to be released in an ideal environment, not during this current environment. 
He said, once this happens and they finally are able to release GMT, that we should see some stability with GST prices because there's going to be a lot less sell pressure at that point. Since a lot more people will be opting to earn GMT instead of GST, that will put less sell pressure on GST. And a lot more people will be using GST to build up to level 30 to get their sneakers there. So they have to burn a lot of GST on the way there, which again is a big burn mechanism and it should help balance out the inflationary tokenomics that GST has. They went on to say that we want our community to know that this is a long-term project we fully expect to come out on top after the recession. GST is unfortunately a short-term challenge that all users have to face, but we see things improving when we initiate our next phase. So we're gonna have to give it some time and see what happens. We're almost at the end guys, hang in there. Future updates, they will implement new mechanics that have to do with GMT and gems, but no timeline as of yet. Panda skins, they will be released sometime after Ape Realm launches. Releasing it too early may overwhelm new users if they introduce too many changes too quickly. The smack. Step in heavily invest into our tech, especially for our anti-cheating system. It makes up the core of Stepin's app. Currently, they're utilizing edge computing plus federated learning to address privacy and regulatory concerns. An example, it's a decentralized manner of training our AI system to access the studying of users' data without storing it. With these methods, their AI team has made incredible progress in resolving modern compliance issues. The energy bridge. Assuming you have one shoe on both BNB and Soulchain, the amount of additional energy you will receive on the new realm in the first month will be plus two. On the second month, it'll be halved to plus one. And on the third month, it will provide no additional energy. They also said that the energy will be different and unique on every single realm. So you can potentially have up to 60 energy a day if you really wanted to. 20 on Solana, 20 on BNB, and 20 on the Ape Realm. That is insane. Roadmap updates, they streamlined it to only include items that are being worked on. Everything that has been accomplished already has been removed from it. Concluding thoughts from the team. It is easy to get pessimistic when market conditions are not in your favor. However, it is important to focus on longevity. We are building out an app that will stand the test of time, not to fizzle out after a couple of months. And that's it guys, this video has become long enough so I'm not gonna add anything else to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button. Don't forget to smash the like. I'll see you guys on the next one. As always, peace and love.